Hello, welcome to the Jazz Room. I'm your host, Joan Watson-Jones. Thanks for stopping by. Come in, relax, while we enjoy great jazz. Each week we present the music of independent jazz artists, as well as those we've grown to love through the years. We open with the music of guitarist Tomas Johnson. This interview was recorded from our chat on Zoom, our very first Zoom interview. We talked about his CD, 130th and Lennox. Right now you're listening to Somewhere Over Stockholm. Enjoy. to the jazz room, Tomas Jansen. Thank you, Joan. I'm really grateful to be back here. Oh, I'm, I, you know, this is your second time in the jazz room, isn't it? Uh, I know. I think it might even be the third time. I'm not sure, but I do remember interviewing you for your CD, Coast to Coast. Yeah, you see, Coast to Coast. But that was the one from uh, three, Stockholm, New York, and Los Angeles. And then didn't you, we do uh, experiences with Tootie Heath also? 
No, I don't think so. No, that does not ring a bell. But that's okay, you know. Okay. But we do have somewhere <laughs> along the line, maybe if we, how this works out, maybe I can pull out from the archives that Coast to Coast interview. Oh, yeah. And, and play it sometime. Mm -hmm. So, last time we met, we were at, I think we were at one of the jazz conventions and we talked, because that's how we met to start with. Let's, yeah. let's talk just two seconds about how we met. We met at IAJE in New York. Yeah, I remember exactly. <laughs> I remember. And you were interviewing me, weren't you? Yeah, I was sitting in the lobby of the, of the what's the big hotel there called? Uh, uh, Mid Manhattan Sheraton, I think. Uh, either the Sheraton or the Hilton, because they used the Hilton, the Hilton, probably. The Hilton. Right, probably the Hilton. This yeah. round chair there. Oh, yes. And, and I was mm -hmm. doing some uh, research, I mean, doing, I was actually writing an article for Swedish Jazz or Music Magazine about that conference. Oh. And then I was sitting beside and we started talking and I thought this would be great to interview you, Joan, here. And, and then I did an interview with you for the magazine there and you got in uh, the Swedish yeah, what's it, Music Magazine, I think. I remember that because my son found it on, on the internet at one time. He said, but mom, it's all in Swedish. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I did. I think I sent you a translation. I hope. <laughs> but whatever. So tell it's us good. about how you first got started playing your guitar or doing music. Oh yeah, that's a that's a that's a long or a short story. You want to hear the short one, maybe? <laughs> uh, you could do a uh, shorter medium. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it started very early because I was uh, I was playing the recorder already when I was six years old. And, and um, I, my, my mom told me later on that, that what would happen was sometimes I would get upset and then I would disappear into my room and then it would get quiet. And then after a while she would hear me play the recorder. And then she knew everything was okay. That's interesting. And that would happen quite a few times. Mm -hmm. So that became my thing. <laughs> and then uh, further on then I actually started playing the cello I, I was into guitar already when I was, I had some special idea about that when I was like, changed, when I was maybe eight or eight, nine mm -hmm. years, eight or nine years old, you started with, with an instrument come after the record and where I went to school then. And then I, uh, I had the dean of the music school, was my teacher then, and, and he said, I think you should play the cello. And I said, well, that sounded interesting. And it was also strings, you know. So, so I went for, and I was, I was, I was going to become a cellist for, for, for quite a, when, when I was like in high school, and then later on. So it was, that was an amazing experience. They're still with me. And then it went back to the guitar anyway. But then all the things happened. Right, right, yeah. right. So, so you play the cello. You, do you play other instruments? Yeah. So I grew up with that. to play the, you know, the chamber orchestra where we played Bach and all that. And uh, that was now it was mostly that cello. And then uh, came the guitar into the picture in my early teens again. I can't Are, were you doing classical on the guitar as well? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. And then it became, yeah, so it was both, I guess. But not mainly. I went through all kinds of styles, you know, from rock guitar to, uh, and then into, then came jazz. Okay, How so did so jazz yeah. grab you? How did it come to you and say Yeah, this? that's also not a story. <laughs> all the <laughs> things could be short or long story, you know. But the short story is, uh, two sources, I would say. The, I mean, I say this, the main source here is this little EP that I listened to by Charlie Parker called Cool Blues. And and that, that just rang a bell with me right away. So Cool Blues, and I can still hear it. You know? It's just a, a 12 bar head by Parker. That's not, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and it just, the way I could hear instantly how he played over the chord changes. And then I came from playing blues more kind of, uh, you know, from rhythm and blues, maybe you would say, or country blues, that, that mm -hmm. thing that came from rock and roll in when you came into blues, listening to guys like uh, Albert, you know, maybe, uh, who was it? Albert King, I think. Yeah. And then some of the other blues players and so on. But then I heard Parker there and I was like, uh, you know, it, it just lifted me straight up in the air. Like, what, what's going on here? It was, it, was, it was an amazing experience. And then I went in that direction, definitely. Oh, so, that's... yeah. And then everything else came. Uh, Django Reinhardt had a big influence on me too, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then when I heard West Montgomery, that was the, 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 you know, that connected the whole thing. 
Now, when did you come to the U.S.? When did you? Oh, oh I've been here quite a while by now because I actually got here older than 1991. 1991. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say palindrome numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special year for me. Right, 1991. Yeah. 1991. Yeah. Okay, so so you've been here quite a while. Have you been living in New York the whole time, or? No, no, I went to Los Angeles. That was, that was my big uh, thing, you know, should I go to LA or to New York? So in, wow. the, in, in the spring of 91, I went to New York to check out the schools. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of friends I stayed with on, on um, I remember down Midtown somewhere. They, they rented uh, James Moody's old apartment, actually. <laughs> with them. Yeah, and then, but I found out there were so many Europeans in New York st lining up to try to get, play, you know, all these sax players <laughs> and yeah. the poor guitar players, some of them could play solo. So then I had friends who recommended going, and then it was also the thing that I had found out about Joe DiOrio in uh, Los Angeles, who is a master guitarist uh, in, in the bop, post-bop vein. Uh, uh, very interesting, and, and he became my mentor, and he still is, too. I still didn't see him today. You know, so it's, so I went to, to LA to study with him, basically. And then I found out that Joe Pass lived in Los Angeles, too. So I thought, okay, I can go to LA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in LA. So this yeah. segue is very nice huh? into our second song. Oh. For, uh, that we're going to play in just a little bit when we stop speaking. Um, I picked Latitude, Longitude from your CD. 130th and Lennox. Tell me about this song a little bit before we stop to listen to it. Oh yeah, Latitude, Longitude. It's a, yeah, it's something I wrote for the for this release actually. So it came about, um, I had and I, I had lots of ideas. I have piles of ideas actually. Then you got to work them out to make it the whole piece of music. <laughs> and this was a good occasion of course. So I took this one and uh, it, it's something about, uh, I think, uh, latitude, longitude, the position, being in a place and really being in that place, and being in the now too, time. So that's, the, and that, that, that piece of music has, has, you know, I think actually the notes gave me that t title because it's like, uh, it's uh, two different no two notes coming from different direction, almost clashing in, in small intervals and then becoming like uh, uh, positioning the whole thing. So I was going to say it kind of connects to, to being in the now and, and, uh, the, and the Parker now's the time uh, title. So um, yeah, that's what that was about. Okay, so let's listen now to Latitude Longitude. Yeah.
I like that tune, by the way. I do. Thank you. So, I really oh. like that tune, Latitude, Longitude, <laughs> that we just beautiful. listened to. Now, why did you call this project 130th and Lennox? Yeah, so simple as this, you know, this is where I am. This is where I am right now. <laughs> That's where you are. I'm, I'm not straight in the corner. I'm not out on the streets. I'd actually have a place to live in. <laughs> but I'm right here, in, uh, very close to the corner of 130th and Lennox in central Harlem, New York. Okay. And now I've been here for about uh, 10 years, actually. Wow, yes. I didn't know you. I, I've yeah. been seeing Boom. you off and on, uh, you know, at the various conferences, but I didn't mm -hmm. realize you were in New York City all this time. Yeah, it's been a few years now. Yeah, so wow. that's interesting, and, and that's, that's came about. So it's also latitude, longitude, position here with 130th and yeah. Lennox, and those two streets across there. <laughs> Tell us about the musicians on this project. Okay, so the whole thing started for me uh, since I've been in LA for quite a bit of time before I drove across actually to New York from LA to New York in 2010. I, I, have been, I was in Los Angeles and I had a great time there and I got into the jazz community already in the 90s. And uh, so the, the first thing I to start up this project, I said I go to LA and I start recording over there with my friends that I really have been working with for so many years. And so, so I have there Miss Nedra Wheeler on the upright bass, who is actually playing on my first recording project with Billy Higgins also on, uh, on Sherman Ferguson. Uh, so, uh, and then Donald Dean, who was, I've been working with for a long time, also based in Los Angeles, drummer, who's famous for the Swiss movement recording with Eddie Harris, Les McCann. Um, and he he's quite an amazing drummer. I spent a lot of time with him, just him and me. I would go over to his place in there in West Adams, and we would just play drums and guitar. And we wouldn't even play tunes. I don't know what it was just we just start playing and just listen to his snare drum. It was just amazing each time. I mean, I learned so much from him. Just you know, uh, yeah. So that's where where it started, and uh, and then we went. I did a session there, and then it pro proceeded in New York here. And I was all I've been for many years wanting to record with Steve Nelson. So uh, and I got in touch with him there, and uh, oh yeah, he was interested, and I, I knew him from before. And uh, so Steve Nelson and then Chuck McPherson on drums, who I've been working with for quite a bit of time. I and mean, he's been touring with me in Germany and in Sweden. We played uh, Porgy and Bess. It's actually a video on YouTube with, with Chuck McPherson and Esiet Esiet from Porgy and Bess in Vienna. And also uh, I got uh, 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 Hilliard Green on bass from Chuck actually recommended him and he's been amazing new bit new a connection for me musician to work with yeah. okay okay well this is great now we have a couple of songs that we're going to play at the end of the program one of which is crystal tell me about this song oh yeah that's a that's that's an old swedish folk song actually uh, love song yes and um I've been working. I, I also I have like a side um, project where I play classical guitar. Uh, I call it from Bach to jazz, and um, this has been part of that program for many years. I do it uh, usually in studios in summertime in churches around Sweden, which I'm going to do even this year actually now, even. So uh, that's interesting. And 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 I and then I was thinking about this, you know, and, and I know Nedra kind of connects to that. Um, Swedish sound. She's been over there with me too at the Stockholm Jazz Festival, actually, quite some years ago. And um, so I wrote an arrangement for for trio for a jazz trio on, on this folk song, and that's what came out as the crystal. Yeah, it's a nice tune. I really it's like. A, you know, it's a song my mom used to sing to me when I was very small. And, uh, Interesting. Part of the, Interesting. Part of the heritage kind of from Swedish folk music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
All right, we have another one called Prince Albert. Tell me about that one. Oh, that's a, that's a, something I learned here in New York, actually. It came to me, and uh, so I've been playing that for a few years. It's, it's, it, it's being played here at, at, at sessions and so, and, and it's, uh, it's just an amazing composition. Um, and, uh, and then I was asking Chuck McPherson about it, uh, and he said um, when he was a kid, he would, he would go, Kenny Dorham would, would say to tell him to go and buy tobacco. Because he grew up uh, with 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 uh, here in New York with his with his dad Charles McPherson and uh, and uh, and that was Prince Albert tobacco. So that's where okay. it comes if somebody wonders okay. <laughs> who was Prince Albert and Kenny Doran. That's a great conversation. It's just the language, you know. So it's yeah. and then I wrote an intro and an outro for it. So it worked out pretty good with, with the vibes there and and, and uh, Steve uh, connected there. So we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, well, tell us how can people find this, find your CD, especially now. Uh, I mean, the easy way, just go to my site, tomasjanzon.com. It's like Thomas without the H and Janzon with a Z, J A N Z O N, dot com. And you, you can also just go to Spotify or Pandora for streaming, or you can get it at uh, Bandcamp too if you want to get the actual CD copy direct from me. You <clears throat> can shop. Also, Amazon has it, so it's a, it's it's available. Okay, well, even Amazon Japan has it. And <laughs> 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 yeah. Great, that's great. Yeah. Well, there's so many different ways now we can get our music out. It's just great. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's changing. Yeah, it it's has great. changed a lot. It's well, great. thank you very much, Tomas, for spending time here with us in the jazz room. Well, Joan, I'm so grateful to be with you. It's it's always so happy. I, I really love it.
to the end of another show. Thank you for spending time here with us in the Jazz Room. We love hearing from you. You can find the Jazz Room on Twitter at Ms. Jazz Kitty, or you may email me or chat with me through the Jazz Room page of my website, joanwatsonjones.com. Until next time, you've been in the Jazz Room. I'm your host, Joan Watson Jones. <laughs>